Hello everybody and welcome back to the Mega Modded series. We're going to jump in once again and see just who we might randomize as. Whoopsie. Randomize, randomize. Click the button. There you go. Oh, it's a joyous day. It's a joyous day when it's Tainted Keeper. Tainted Keeper is always a character in which... Okay. Goodbye. Do you know what? I'm perfectly happy with the way that that panned out. Okay. Uh, Tainted Keeper's always going to be a character that I'm, like, both very, very happy and sad to see. Because he's so good, but he's so fragile. It's so easy to go wrong. Also, why can't I hit this eye? It's so easy for things to go wrong as this dude. Also, that's a, that's a pretty good th uh, trinket there. Every time we enter a secret room, we're going to get a, a little sack. We should easily be able to afford Spoonbender here. I'm not going to check my shop until I've bought Spoonbender because I don't want to be disappointed. I don't want to like see an item in there that I really love. Okay, these guys, these guys are goobering out here. <laughs> Already at 13 cent. But yes, it is it is a joyous day. But I have a I have a pretty good question for the question of the day today. I, I've been trying more often than not to think of that before I start the episode, kind of have one like planned out. A lot of the time I usually just ask one based on how I'm feeling on that day or what the events of that day. But this one, I kind of planned it out a little more because I think yesterday's I had a bit of a tough time thinking of. But this one is, what is, ooh, I really like the, the purple mouth that this guy's got with this. Um, also, yeah, quad shot with Hermie is just insane. Uh, what is your favorite item of clothing that you earn? Like, whether it be something sentimental that you, like, got from a family member or anything like that, or a friend, or if it's, like, a gaming-related shirt that you just really like. Because mine is probably my Hollow Knight t-shirt. I've mentioned it before. It's actually kind of funny how the Hollow Knight t-shirt panned out because I, uh, I bought it from... I can't remember where I bought it from now. I think it was the official site. And it didn't turn up for a really long time. And I was like, oh no, that's really disappointing. I was really hoping to, to get it soon. And it hadn't appeared for like two months. And I'd kind of somewhat forgotten about it. Like, obviously I wasn't going to not claim it. I still wanted it. So I went to the website and I spoke to the customer support and I ordered it again. Um, obviously free of charge. They just sent out a new one because the first one hadn't arrived. And I was like, okay, cool. Get that in a, get, get that in a month or so. And then the first one arrived. <laughs> And then, the second one also arrived. So now I've got two of the same shirt, which is awesome. Oh, oh do you know what? I saw Hierophant and I was like, yay. And then I realized it's just flies, isn't it? Uh, another Hierophant. Oh, my lord. And a magician. Okay, we're, we're, we're really getting the good stuff going on here. Right, what we got in here. Okay, so right off the bat, we've got quite a lot of items here. I think spawn wisps with homing tears upon killing enemy. I think we take this because for one, we've already got some homing stuff going on and the wisps will protect us. I think it's a pretty interesting little synergy with the homing we've already got going on. But yeah, I don't know how many of you have had that situation before. You've ordered something and then it, it hasn't arrived. So you've ordered something else. I did that once before as well with um, one of the one of the things that I have quite a lot is uh, sneak, which is essentially like off-brand G Fuel. <laughs> it's uh, an energy drink replacement thing that isn't specifically branded at gamers that is really nice. I drink it quite a lot and it's just a lot better for you than energy drinks, but I don't like coffee, so energy drinks like the only way I get my caffeine. Um, so it's, it's a lot better for me. Uh, we're just going to Blue Baby. And um, yes, I get, this, I get this stuff called Sneak and you normally order them in like two tubs. I can't remember how much they cost now. It's like it's like thirty pound a tub or something like that. Um, and I, you, I like order them as a duo in two tubs. Um, so it's 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 reasonably expensive, but they do last you quite a long time. So it's worth it, and they, they work out a lot cheaper than energy drinks on average, anyway. So, ooh, I love this synergy with the night shade thingy. This is really cool. We have some really really cool stuff going on right now. We are the absolute herming master. I love this. Uh, so I'd ordered them and they pretty much the same thing happened where I was like, what the hell? Where are they? It's been like three weeks. Normally they come in like two or three days. So I was like, um, I'm going to need to like replace my order here. Did the same thing. And then, then the pretty much the exact moment, oh, the exact moment that I, um, order the first, like the, the, the next one, the first one appears. I'm like, okay. Ooh, do you know what? I'll take Nancy Bombs. 
Also, Steam Sale here has put us in a very good spot. Very good spot indeed. I think, unless I, I make some really colossal mistakes, we've got a really good setup to have a very, very good run right now. Um, just because... We have such a huge ability to be able to, like, stay alive. And then we're hitting all of our shots as well. So we're going to be putting out some mad damage. It's really good. I'm liking what we've got going on right now. And then, honestly, Rotgut is so good for us. Like, Rotgut definitely has some issues. I'm going to take out the spiders first, you know. I'm not even going to worry about you for now. Uh, Rotgut's really good for us because, obviously, it's protection. But also, it's going to suck all the coins in, uh, which we can kind of utilize if an enemy's close enough, that is. I like that. This, this this run's got some sauce. Basically, what we need now is a little bit of damage, a little bit of fire rate, and then we're sitting majorly pretty. Another nickel there? Wow. Oh, wowee. Good, good. I'm really not fretting about getting money at this point, because money is just so easy for us to come by. I'm using my magician card here for a range upgrade and that is all. I think I could probably get away with using a thingy bomb here. Obviously that didn't really work too well, but we've got plenty of them. There you go. Easy. Oh, ho, ho, ho. this home is so nice. And then we get that as well. Of course, we'll check out the devil deal. Um, I mean, why not? Why not? They're not bad at all, so let's take them. Let's go down to the next floor, and yes, I am in a good mood. But there's, there's not like I've, I've, had, I've sort of had quite a lot of, um, of different like gaming-related uh, shirts and stuff. I buy quite a lot because basically, I don't know if any of you kind of did this when you lived at home. It's not as if my parents wouldn't let me buy gaming-related tops, but they did. I didn't have a lot of them, especially when I was younger, and obviously they had to buy them for me. Um, I didn't have a lot. So my kind of ultimate dream, or at least what it was when I was younger, obviously not so much now, was, oh damn, when I live alone, I'm just going to fill my entire wardrobe with just like gaming related tops and stuff. But I've, I've ended up amassing quite a lot just sort of by happen chance, like a happenstance, so I say. Um, I have like an Overwatch one from when I used to play Overwatch a lot. I have a few like TV ones, like I have an Always Sunny t-shirt. Um... Yeah, I, I've ended up getting amassing quite a few. Oh, I do not like the way that enemy moves. Did not like that. I'm, I've ended up amassing quite a few. I'm trying to think of what other gaming-related ones I have. I have a lot of Pokemon ones, surprisingly. There's a, a shop that, that's near me that just opened called Uniqlo, which is like a... I think it's a Japanese... I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I apologize if I'm incorrect here. I think it's a Japanese retailer that, that like recently sort of broadened out to the UK. Uh, and they are great. Like, it's a little expensive, but they have some really, really high quality stuff. Uh, ooh, we'll definitely take Herming Bombs. We'll definitely take that. Uh, we'll definitely take Fire Rate. I, we might as well take the Hoarder as well. Nice. Okay, got some good stuff going on here. Being able to find our secret rooms easily and having more bombs is very, very nice. I might as well, I was just going to leave it, but I might as well try and bomb this out of here. Nice, I'm very happy about the fire rate. The fire rate's huge for us. But th this this Uniqlo place is, is kind of crazy. I don't know if uh, if it appears anywhere else, like America, or if anyone's just seen the shop in general in the UK as well. But they have some wizard technology. So this this is just me like i feel it, it feels like me being kind of old age and behind the times but i genuinely was like baffled by the technology so when you go to checkout obviously a lot of places nowadays have self checkouts that's nothing new but this place oh that was bad this place has a self checkout i'm gonna have to uh play this really cautiously now aren't i why not um has a self checkout where you put your clothes into like a basket. Wait, there is a penny over there. Hmm. Let me let me let me suss this out one second before I finish the story. Okay, this isn't all too hard actually. I can I can grab these uh, these coins without taking damage. Good, good. Okay, there you go. So the, they have this self checkout where basically you get your items and you put them in this little basket. But 
you put them in the basket and it immediately knows what the items are. Like, you don't scan them. You don't have to scan anything. You just put your items in this little basket thing and it knows exact, like, even if they're all, like, wrapped in a ball, like, on top of each other, there's, like, no, like, you, the, the tags aren't visible to the scanner or anything like that. And, like, literally every single one of them, it just knows exactly what it is. I'm like, what, how? How? Like, there's items on top. And the thing is as well, it's like, it's like, it's not even just, they have, like, generic prices, like, uh, men's white v-neck t-shirt. Uh, 10 pounds. No, it knew the exact shirt that I bought. It was like, it was like Pokemon Pikachu print t-shirt. It's like, how, what? How, like, the shirt, I don't understand because it must wear the exact same as other shirts in that size. So I don't know how it knows. Okay, this is terrible. I don't know how it knows. <laughs> and, like, I, I, I rarely get sort of baffled by technology, but that I was like, what? <laughs> I don't understand. How does it do it? So if anyone in the comments is more tech savvy than I and knows, like, I feel like I'm a pretty tech savvy person and that blew my mind. And it was quite funny as well because there was like a, an older age couple next to us, uh, me and my girlfriend, when, when we were purchasing the stuff. Um, and we were like dumbfounded by it. And they were like in their 50s or 60s and they were like, what in the shit is this? <laughs> they, they were just like, what? What does this mean? How does this... How does any of this work? Okay, finally got a luck upgrade. Been, been waiting on that for a little while. Ooh, shielded tears is real good for us here. Real good for us. God damn, I love how we just basically don't need money at all. <laughs> like, we've always got enough to purchase whatever we want. Ooh, interesting room here. Okay, so we want to be bombing these. Hopefully they don't give us burn hearts. That one gave us burn hearts. And that one also. Oh no, that one gave us burn orbitals. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. You can get items out of those. I think they're really cool additions to the game. They're from my Repentance Plus. And yeah, I think they're really, really good. Yes, shielded tears with this is so good. We have a burn army now as well. But yeah, I gotta say, like, I don't think, and the, the thing is as well, it's like, it's not technology I've seen anywhere else in the UK. Like, I get that it's a it's a Japanese store, or at least I think it's a Japanese store, so um, the technology is probably from Japan and a bit more advanced than I was, but I was still like, what the dickens? What the heck? Not that. Oh, really? Okay, now a door mimic on this character. That's, that's pretty annoying. <laughs> that is pretty annoying. Okay, at least we got a penny back here. Yeah, Dom Mick in, in, uh, in, as Tate the Keeper here. That's some risky business that you're putting on, on to me there. Oh my lord. The rebirth, uh, is, is good for us right now, because we're getting extra money out of it. And he's been reborn and giving us extra money for it. Definitely pop that. Oh, really? Shouldn't even be able to happen as this character, I don't think. Such a scam. But we don't need the extra money from uh, the Golden Penny, so I'm not going to bother. Oh, did I just walk all of my Bernies into spikes as well? My god. I, like, that's another, another good question. I, I, I like... I, I kind of should save this for another episode, but I'm just on the topic now. Like, what was your first... Hey, it's this dude. What was your first sort of moment where you kind of went, oh shit, like, technology's crazy? Because <laughs> um, I, I, I remember... It's really weird, actually. I remember playing Call of Duty 4 when I was younger. And then when Call of Duty 5 came out... Bear in mind, if you go back and look at these games, they look basically identical. But I remember, like playing Call of Duty 5 uh, after having played 4 when 5 came out and I was like whoa the graphics oh my god they're am they're amazing they're so realistic and it's like looking back on it now for one they look exactly the same 
<laughs> and for two, they don't look realistic in the slightest. And it's just like, it's crazy how times change like that. I remember my dad telling me um, about one of the games he used to play. Really? We're just going to get screwed over constantly by our devil deals and shops and all sorts of stuff. I'm, I'm, I think I'm more partial to Head of Krampus, I'll be honest. I'll take the death card as well. And we'll grab that. And we'll head on down. Yeah, um, I remember him telling me about a, a racing game. I can't remember the name of the game now. It's like just lodged in the back of my head. I can like almost remember it, but not quite. But him showing me that and then like that was his sort of like oh shit moment of when he played. He said he played that game when he was younger and he was baffled by how good the graphics were. And you look back at it now and obviously it was when my dad was young. So they are bad. <laughs> the graphics are just awful. Um, they, they don't look realistic at all, but he said like when he first played it, he was like, this is the most realistic thing I've ever seen. Gaming will never be better than this sort of thing. I think everyone at some point has had that moment. It's kind of sad now that like a lot of a lot of the people that were sort of born sort of in 2010 or later will never really have that because they were kind of brought up on modern graphics and obviously as i just said there's always going to be this sentiment of graphics will never get better than this that's always going to be a thing like i'll say that I i'm going to say that now but it's not really true graphics will definitely get better in some way or another but what i mean is we're at the point now where there's never going to be one of those big jumps ever again i don't think like in in the five years between like 2000 and 2005 or like 1995 and 2000 um the, the the graphical jump of computing was just immense it was just insane how how much crazier things looked and how much really more could be done with computing power and i don't think in terms of gaming that will ever happen again in terms of in in uh, such a large scale that is i'm not gonna take spinning wheel this time i mean i might as well take this yeah, I, I really don't think that's ever going to be something that we get again. It just... Oh, people, stop making rooms like this. I'm going to use a bomb. Grab this bad boy. And it is, it's just weird to think. I mean, I was... I, I was born at a really sort of interesting time. Like, a lot of you watching were were born in the in the age of the internet. Uh, you, you were born, like, in the 2000s or near to it. I mean, obviously, there's going to be people that were born around the same age as me or are older than me. But a lot of you are younger, probably, like, around b between, like, 14 and 18 and kind of born in the 2000s era. Um, and it's kind of weird to think that, like, all of y'all were born into the day of the internet. Like, I, I was born before the internet. Um, and before, like, computers became, like, a staple in homes and stuff. But, saying that, I I did grow up with it. Basically, as soon as they were available, we got them. And, like, I don't have much memory from before we had computers and internet. I, I don't remember much. I do, I do remember, I, I definitely remember, like, when internet gaming wasn't really a thing. I, I remember having a PlayStation 2 and the online features that PlayStation 2 had been bare bones and barely functional. I remember that. But I don't really have, like, vivid memory of when we didn't have computers at all. And we didn't have internet. Because my dad has always been, like, an avid gamer. Um, he, he plays a lot of, like, World of Warcraft and Diablo, those sort of games. Uh, so he's always kind of been up to date with, with technology. And he, even with, like, the consoles, he, he got, like, a, a PlayStation 1 really shortly after they came out. Same with the PlayStation 2. Oh, there you go. I see. Same with the PlayStation 2 as well. Uh, so I, I've always kind of been up to date with the consoles, but I, for me, it's really interesting because I got to see, like, the whole... But I was born in, like, such a great time to be able to essentially see the whole process start to finish of, of the evolution of gaming. And while it's nice that people now are born the day of the internet and just they get all of that just at their fingertips pretty much from a very young age um too young for the most part but from a very young age uh it is it is interesting but it's also like a bit 
sad to see that these the, these people are like they never get to sort of experience that change. Cause it's like I, I, like one of the one of the things that I see a lot. And this was more of a like millennial meme when the self-deprecating millennial memes were like a big thing, um, which they still kind of are. But you know what I mean. Uh, one of the big ones was kind of like what we were born at a really stupid age because we were born too late to too late to explore the earth and too early to travel uh, to explore space. And while I do kind of agree with that. Like, yeah, we don't get either of those things. I argue we get kind of a better experience in that we we were born in such a time where we get to experience the evolution of technology. And I think that's huge. There's some crazy stuff. Like, if you think, actually think about, like, what the hell's going on with this enemy? Yeah, there you go. Um, if you kind of think about, like, how much technology has evolved. I mean, even just, oh, I did not mean to press that. Even just the process of what I am currently doing right now, playing a video game while recording my screen and my voice to publish it to an online website where other people from any country in the world can go and watch and listen. It's insane. It's crazy. Like, the, the, the fact that just 20 years ago, 20 years ago, None of that was even remotely possible. Is obscene. It's, well, I say tw may maybe a little more than 20 years ago. You, you could do some of this 20 years ago, but not to this extent is what I mean. And it, I just, I like, it's crazy to be able to sort of watch it all happen the way it did. Oh my God. Not that we needed that money anyways, but still, that was a lot of money. Okay, I think we've entered terminal velocity of our run here. I don't think we're losing. Like, we've written 99 cent here, and uh, money is essentially a non-issue for us now. Nice. Check out this real quick. Where is our shoppy shoppy? Ugh. Come on now. Headless baby. Oh shit. Enemies afoot. I remember uh, as well, like, one of the one of the games for me that was always pretty crazy to like play when I was younger was a game called Penny Racers. I like it wasn't exactly like a crazy game or anything. It was it was literally just like a sort of Mario Kart-esque clone type of game where you play, you you race a bunch of like miniature wind-up cars, but you you sort of, it's a video game, so you sort of play them like normal cars, K kind of like the RC Revenge sort of stuff. Um, but I I kind of thought that was wild because I remember they had like a pr promotional thing where you could buy the penny races in real life and get them into your game, and I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. this guy again, hello. I was like, whoa. Technology. Do you know? Do you know the the SpongeBob meme where it's just Squidward going, "Future, future." That's how I felt. Okay, you're not gonna give me anything. That was very preemptive. I didn't know we were at Mother already. Golden penny, nice. I, I wonder if it was intended that you can get like golden pennies and luck pennies as table keeper. I feel like it was, but it's sort of a power. Especially golden bennies. The one thing we desperately need right now is more damage. We're still pretty lacking on damage. Nice. We're going blue baby though, so it's not like we can take any more. A little bit of a shame. We keep going though. We push forward on this run. But yeah, Penny Race has been able to like interact like that with a game, and that was that was PS2 era, and I was like, whoa, what is this? This is some magic right here. That's a game I used to absolutely love. I feel like I, I, I've, I've sort of talked about this a little bit before, how we just don't get the same caliber as games as we used to. And it might just be my nostalgia talking, because obviously I'm going to be extra nostalgic for like my PS2 days. Uh, but yeah, you just don't, I just don't seem to like see any of the same caliber of games as you used to. Like... Just things were just so much more unique. Everything feels like a, co a copy and paste. I suppose one of the big reasons for feeling like that is because obviously now 
more things have been done, more time has passed. So therefore, of course, you're going to um, see more rehashes of the same types of games. You don't really see too much more unique things anymore. But I do feel like they're a lot more samey than they used to be, even even with that caveat. I mean, then again, it's the, it's the same with every type of media, though, really, isn't it? Everything nowadays is just a rehash of something older. Everything now is just like, nah, we're not going to make anything new. We're just going to play on um, play on people's nostalgia and hope for the best. I remember, like, the, the first... I, I'm trying to sort of recall now, but the first game I vividly remember playing is uh, Gran Turismo, the, the second one, I think. Maybe it was the first one. It was on PS1. Another one I quite vividly remember is playing Tomb Raider and Tomb Raider 2. Those are pretty, those are pretty classic ones. I've got a lot of questions today. But yeah, what's, what's some of your guys' like most vivid early game memories? I don't know if electric dice works with this active, so I'm going to try and uh, swap it out if I get the opportunity. What on earth is going on right now? Yeah, I'll try and swap it out if I get the opportunity to. How did that not kill you, sir? I still love this this homing setup we got going on right now, though. This is really fun. Just firing so many homing shots all the time. But the fire rate, though. The fire rate is still pretty gross. Oh, no. I almost died there. Very nearly. Shit. Um, uh, mistakes were made. Death. Okay. That was close. Mistakes were certainly made there. Ooh, this is a hard enemy to kill. Okay, luckily Rock Goat actually took care of you. Just wanted to get rid of that guy in the middle. What we got now? I want to play the Sack Room. Playing Sack Room as this character is always fun, but it's very risky at this late in the game. Right. I know we don't have our active uh, enabled right now, but still. This is another boss that... I could definitely die to this guy just because he's an absolute biatch. The footstep things he do, the stomps are just too unpredictable. Hopefully my bombs are going to do a good job here. Seem to have done a decent job, actually. There you go. Okay, that wasn't so bad. We've got a Holy Mantle active as well. I don't... Where the hell did we get that from? Okay, it's gone. Oh, we got Blanket, don't we? I forgot we had Blanket. Getting really annoyed at our Devil Deals not uh, not giving us anything. It's a bit sad. We could have had some really good stuff from the Devil Deals here. And we've had... What have we had? Two items from Devil Deals so far? And they've both been pretty meh. Yeah, I don't actually want to be going this way. I've just realised. Secret rooms are all the other way. Back this way we go. Oh, we've got a we've got a tainted keeper, Mini Isaac. Yeah, apparently because hearts don't spawn as his character, instead, just sometimes when a heart would have spawned, it'll spawn a Mini Isaac instead. I think it's a good way of doing it. That character's looking weird. <laughs> Pretty good golden rope here. I like it. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Oh my god. I'm, I'm liking uh, the, the, the typeset thing we've got going on here for the occasional uh, effect of Broken Murdom. It's quite helpful. Now, do you know what? That enemy's so annoying, especially when it's doubling up like that. Just get gone. Oh god. How did I not get hit there? Stay away from me, pins. Nine lives. That is a potentially good thing to get. Hmm. I don't really know any way in which we can make that work, though. But I'd like it. We need an extra life, really. Well, no, not really. We have to get an extra life. Uh, not extra life, sorry. Extra red heart. We need one. Otherwise, it's untakeable. Why do I keep using this before the boss? Questions science cannot answer. No, it's okay. We've got a battery bum back there. I'll go and uh, I'll go and play around with that guy for a little bit. We've got plenty of money about. 
But yeah, nine lives is certainly, certainly a good thing for us if we could get a health upgrade, but I don't know if we can. Right. Play you. Seeing if I can get a payout from him. Yeah, jumper cables is pretty good. In slow-mo, it's even better. Okay, that was that was good. Hey, we got double trouble out of that. There you go. Oh, that's gonna be big damage. Oh, and it's split as well with scatter bombs. Even better. No devil deal again. We are getting kind of shafted by our uh, our devil deals and such here. Nonetheless, it's still a good run. Still a good run. Push ever forward. Curse of Conquest. Gonna get some elite elites here. Yeah, I'm still kind of surprised we've not really managed to garner any more fire rate or damage. It's mainly because like, we kind of got screwed by some of our shops and devil deals, really, over the course of this run. That's some big turds. That's some big fucking shits. Oh, we got petrified poop. Pick that up while we break this thing. Not that we need any of the loot from it, but still. That's just a real big turd you got there. Okay, so Conquest affected this dude, which is problematic. Oh, he died, and he dropped two Isaac's forks. I, I'm guessing that's because of the broken murder effect, right? I don't actually know, but that's, that, that, that's a bit bizarre. Oh, damn. I got hit there, but luckily, I got through it. By the way, that golden rope effect there you just saw when we get hit, that scales with our damage, uh, with our money, so it's going to be doing a lot of damage. The more money we have, the more damage it does. But yeah, we've been, we're kind of past the point of needing money now anyway, so it's just useful for that and that alone. God damn. Even though we don't have that damage and fire rate I want, we're still really strong. Thank you, Broken Murdom, for somehow affecting the, uh, the malls. Helps a lot. Okay, thank God I got rid of that guy quickly, too. Jumper cables helped me out a little bit there, too. Yo, gonna poot out some boys. Ooh, I keep forgetting it can make champions out of enemies that are, uh, that are spawned in. I mean, I guess the card could end up being good. It's the Hanged Man. Or the Lovers. I suppose Lovers isn't bad. It's an extra few, uh, extra bit of damage. Okay. These enemies are really annoying. I'm actually glad that someone has utilized them though on additional flaws. It's a good idea. They weren't really getting any use, were they? Kind of leave him alone for now. Rock got took care of him. Right. So not the greatest setup here, but with 15 homing bombs and the, the chance for all sorts of brilliant damaging effects like that i think we're in the money for some good stuff here we're getting brimstone bombs like so often too i don't know what it is about brimstone bombs but the game really likes giving me them i like the way rock guts just like playing with that chest also glitter bombs are always giving me a key is funny too Okay, we're good to just shoot him here. Nicely nice. No void for me, thank you. I'll be taking a, a leave of absence on the void there. If you're okay with that. Okay, we got some good stuff. We got um, Pentacle, which is really good. We'll take Papa Fly. I'll take Tech L. I'm not going to take that. Yeah, mainly because this gives us piercing. Temperance. Risky play, but I went for it. 
Oh, this is such an annoying room. I just hate the jumping jack boys that he spawns. Otherwise, it's fine. Chocolate milk. That could be good. Actually, very good if we play it like this. Although, saying that, these enemies are getting very close to me. That was... Maybe I want to be charging it up, because that was way riskier than I intended it to be. Yeah, the damage from the cha uh, from not charging it up is actually pathetic. So we're going to have to charge it a little bit. Okay. What is going on in this room? The quarter. Thank you. I needed that so badly. I ended up sticking with this trinket for the whole run, didn't I? I didn't realize. This trinket's good. An extra sack for every secret room. It gives secret rooms guaranteed value. No matter what ends up being in them. Like, a sack is always good. Yeah, definitely because of the fire rate that we don't have that this is so... Uh, Difficult to use. I'm a little confused as to where I'm going here. Okay. The little horsey thing is dead. Get that out of my face. I want more bombs as well here if I can get them. You're dead as well. We're up to nine. It's not great, but it will take out Blue Baby reasonably quickly. All we need is like a good few Brimstone Bombs. Oh god, I lost my Holy Mantle already. In fact, we kind of want to Tap Shoot to delete his tears with Shielded Tears, don't we? Yeah, the... Using, utilizing this for the shielded tiers is way better, actually. Okay, there you go. That was a very fun run. Very fun indeed. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.